Welcome to Biz Alchemy, a podcast about creating a new business paradigm by women for women. I'm your alchemical host, Jacqueline Atkins, and I'm going to take you on an extraordinary adventure to create a business filled with ease, fun, spaciousness, and abundance. Hustle, be gone. Let's birth a new way. Hello, beautiful listener. Welcome back. I am really excited about sharing today's chat with you. It's actually taken a little bit of, oh, I don't know if effort is the right word, but it, it it's taken a little bit more input to create this episode than what my episodes usually do. I recorded it a few weeks ago with Adriana Monique Alvarez And it was a great chat. We always have great connections. Unfortunately, the day we recorded, one of the internet towers here had been damaged by fire. And so we were recording on Zoom and the internet was going in and out. And it was, it could have been frustrating. (laughs) I tried not to get frustrated as we were chatting. But as a result, when I uh, took the audio out of the saved Zoom files, I just left them there. I thought, oh my gosh, that is going to be such a big job to edit because, you know, so you know how on Zoom, if you've got a bad connection, the speech just drags right out. And there were some bits that were just inaudible and I dropped out at one point. So I put it aside going, oh, I I will get to that. Um, You know, it's not scheduled to go out for a few weeks. I will get to that. In the meantime, I uh, went down to Melbourne for a week to stay with my son and his girlfriend. One of my daughters came with me. And while I was away, there were more floods in my area in Byron Bay. And it meant that I had to delay returning by a couple of days. And then I had to delay returning further because the airport was closed that I fly into. So I only just arrived back at lunchtime today. This is Monday and I always put out the podcast episode on Tuesday. I managed to do quite a bit of the editing on the flight back. uh, And also the flight was delayed by about an hour and a half. So we were just sitting in the plane waiting for some light to be fixed. So I actually managed to finally edit this podcast and it's gold. Adriana Monique Alvarez is the most inspiring woman. And at one point I thought, oh, should we just re-record it? Because I did have to cut out a few chunks, but I think it's all worked well. (laughs) You can be the judge of that. There are so many nuggets of wisdom from Adriana and hearing her story, because I associate Adriana with story because she does own a publishing house. I have written two stories for two of her books, and she has also lived an amazing story. And actually, I want to say there, she's created the story. She is an amazing creator. She has a very powerful intuitive voice and she is also quite fearless in in changing her direction. She's one of those clients who I celebrate because if something comes up in her session, even if it's a really big shift, guaranteed a month later when we talk, she's done it. She went ahead and did it straight away, made the shift, even if it meant throwing, you know, basically business up in the air and seeing where it landed when it came back down again. And I love that about her. Adriana is a perfect illustration of a businesswoman who has been in her yang energy very strongly. And she talks to that in today's chat. Now, that's my bio of Adriana. Let me give you the more formal bio. So Adriana is the CEO and founder of AMA Publishing. She's a USA Today bestselling author and champions stories of those who cannot be censored or shut down. She's currently living in the middle of nowhere, Colorado, where she's renovating her grandparents' home and learning how to homestead with her husband, Derek, and two sons, Sam and Grant. When she's not baking bread or making chocolate souffle, you'll find her napping in front of the fire. Enjoy this beautiful conversation 
with the amazing Adriana Monique Alvarez. Adriana, so was there a turning point when you realized you had to move away from the patriarchal model of business and create a new paradigm for your business? Yes, there was. I was doing my thing, just like I've always done it. And I heard, you can't do it like this anymore. You cannot approach your business and your life in this way. You cannot take the same actions. And you need to know this won't work anymore. This is not going to get you where you want to go. It terrified me and slightly excited me because I'm a person that loves change and mixing it up. And so I thought, okay, here we go. You know, once again, I've got to just trust one step at a time that I'll I'll know because you know how it is. It's not like, well, we're not going to do that anymore, but here's exactly what it's going to look like. No, you have to have a lot of faith on this journey. Yep. And knowing your story, Adriana, that's actually happened to you a few times through your career, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Just when I think I know what I'm doing and I've got this whole way of doing it and I've got this down pat, there's these curveballs that come in and go, well, you know, here, here's something else. But you know what I found, and this is probably what allowed me to say yes to it and really lean into it a year ago, is I've learned that every single time I've taken, quote unquote, that risk and stepped into the scarier invitation, it's always worked out really well. And I know for a fact, my attitude has a lot to do with it. So I just thought, you know what? Be open, be open, stay curious, have fun, go with the flow. And I mean, I think too, it comes down to our ability to trust life. Do I really trust life? Have I always been taken care of? Mm. Yeah, I was, you shared a great Facebook post with me and I really enjoyed reading it because it felt like it summed you up so well and you are such a beautiful writer. And in it, you wrote about, you were talking about your book, The Younger Self Letters and something I want to bring up here because you used the term, I began to steal myself when you start a business with Derek, your husband. So I was really interested in that too, because when I read that, I wondered whether in your years working as a business coach, did did many of the women come to you? Were they like that? Had they steeled themselves to be in business? Mm, most definitely. And, you know, if I look back, like when I'm on interviews like this, they always ask me, oh, did you always want to be in business? No, I never wanted to be in business. I mean, <laughs> it was not on my, um, you know, what I want to be when I grow up. I wanted to be a traveler. I wanted to be a volunteer. I wanted to live in places that most people have never even heard of and would definitely never go. And I thought that was my path. And so when I came back to the U.S. at 27, I had horrible malaria that I got in Africa and and coming back into the U.S. (laughs) It's a it's culture shock like no other because it's so fast and it's so intense. And so I didn't even realize I had done it, but I think I actually did it the moment I landed here. Okay, Mm, steal yourself, toughen up, you know, welcome to the real world. And I didn't, I didn't get to be the me that I was when I was traveling and I was a volunteer. I had to take on a whole new persona and a whole new mask and veils in order to be successful. Yeah. And I'm also interested to know, and I can imagine I know the answer, but um, interesting for you maybe just to reflect on is how the women coming to you have changed over the years. Who are you attracting now compared to who you were attracting then? Oh my goodness. It's it's, uh, quite a broad spectrum. Actually, the interesting thing is when we first started our business in 2009, I didn't have a lot of female clients, but I will say, I still remember our first female client And she was basically, she's a good prototype for how all the rest were. So sort of like the insurance agent, basically a man, truthfully, and just very like hardcore go-getter, you know, kept my feet to the fire. There was no chit chat. There was no connection. You better get it done. These are the dates. This is what I expect. You know, it was that kind of, that kind of agreement. I don't even want to call it a relationship. It was not a relationship. And what I began to fa- find is the more I, I hit a crisis, truly. So we were living in San Diego. It was 2011. And I would go to this Whole Foods that was at the top of the hill of where we lived. And I was walking. I always walk when I need to work something out. Walking up this hill. And I'm a combination of frustrated, pissed beyond. Like, I'm just, ugh, I'm just raging inside, 
sad, disappointed because I was recognizing that I had lost me in the process of starting a business. And we had a lot of good things going. We were making more money than we thought we, we could. And I was not happy with it. And I walked back down the hill with my, my bag from Whole Foods. And I told Derek, we're giving up this apartment. We're selling everything. And we're going to Albania for a year because I needed to go back and regroup and have a buffer zone from the madness that is, you know, the U.S. and all of the go, go, go. That's basically, you know, the journey I kept going on. I'd sort of come out and go, oh, no, I got to regroup. Still not me. I'm still compromising. And every time I reclaimed myself, I attracted more and more women who were doing the same, who were not willing to give up their true essence for anything, not a business business included, it's like, that's just too high of a price to pay. Yeah. So even in, so they're reflecting back where you're at. And I'm sure you've found in that is as, as your tribe reflects that back to you, it helps you step into it more. Definitely. Because it's that confirmation, right? It's like, oh yeah, I don't have to be like that to be happy or to do well or to make an impact because now I, look, I've got these examples around me. You know, I, I do this all the time. So I will gather the faces of three to five women who at this moment in time, they are the ones who are giving me hope that me being fully me is okay because I see them being fully them and they don't fall into sort of that death, you know, that pantsuit wearing Susan, what I call it. <laughs> and I literally keep them in front of me. And, and the thing is, is now that I'm saying it, like I've never shared that with them. And, and so it's possible that, you're being that for someone that people are looking to you and going, you know what, because she can walk it out like this. I know it's possible for me too. I can too. Yeah. Oh, so beautifully put Adriana. And that's, and I feel excited because in many ways, everything I talk about, about this new way of being in business, it's exactly this. This is, this is why we have to be uniquely ourselves. You know, I mean, well, ourself is unique, isn't it? That is why we must do it because it's that that inspires others to do the same. It doesn't matter what you're doing, what you're doing in your business, what you're offering. It is showing up as yourself in your business life and in your personal life. And that is just the best form of permission for others to embrace their self. It sure is. I love that. Now, speaking of that, I, I'm also interested about, actually, let's do this bit first, <laughs> your transition into publishing. So, because at the point you were working as a business coach, yeah, and you were, you were still probably in a little bit of yang energy around that, shall we say? Yeah. <laughs> so, what prompted the move into publishing? So, what had happened um, in when was this? I want to say 2017, 2018, somewhere in there. We were living in Albania and I had been accepted to be a contributor for international living. So I had got an interview with them as a traveling family and I became friends with the editor, which this was like my lifelong dream. dream. I was a teenager who read international living and just was like fantasizing about the day I got to leave my small town and do this life. And so he then made me a contributor and a writer. I got some confidence off of that. So then I decided to approach Huffington Post. I got to become a writer for them. I became a writer for Forbes. And so I was writing like eight to 12 articles a month for these various publications. And I got bit with the bug. It's also then when I began to notice how many people kept approaching us and complaining to us about how hard the writing and publishing process was. Actually, just the other day, Derek and I were talking about the people whose books we worked on when it was not an offer. Like we're, oh, sorry, no, Bob, we don't do that. No, but I really want you to. And we were laughing about how we stumbled our way through. So you know what happened after that? I got pregnant with my third child. I had a full-term stillbirth. And I put that all on hold because I had, at the time, I had about 500 clients. And the best I could do was to keep that going. But this was still kind of simmering. And so it was, we were living in Sicily. And I remember we were having this great day at the beach. And I just heard, you know what? You're ready. You can do more than maintain. Go for it. And I was pacing our patio. We had this gorgeous patio. It was full of plants and 
in the afternoon shade, it was just the best place to be. And I'm pacing and I'm nervous. And, you know, when I was going through the grieving process, it really impacted my confidence. So I was a person, I would take any risk at any time. It never bothered me. I am a natural risk taker. And I was like, Derek, should I do it? Should I not do it? And he was like, you have nothing to lose. Just go for it. And that's the exact place I made the announcement about our first book. And boom, the rest is history. Wow. And actually, when you're in Sicily, that's when we first connected, I believe. It is. Yes. (laughs) Wow. Isn't that interesting? So I've been on the journey with you from the beginning. You have. (laughs) (laughs) And so that's where I also thought about tying in what I was going to say before is the writing in that process of writing a chapter, because I did write a chapter for your first book. And in that process of writing, that also helped reveal more about the authentic me. I mean, that's the power of writing, isn't it? You discover yourself, you discover something about yourself in the writing. And so that's what I love as well, that you're offering this to women. It's like, this is another way that you can find out who you truly are, or one aspect that maybe you've been hiding and allow it to come up and I think the two chapters I've written for your books, both of them have given me massive insight in that way. And that in itself has been the gold for me. And that's been so precious. And I'm wondering what feedback do you get from the women contributors in your books? What do they gain from contributing a chapter? Yeah, it's very similar to your story. And I would say like this naturally brought in a softness. It began to soften my edges because it was like, oh, wow, this is an internal place where we begin to contemplate. We ask for guidance. We ask for support. What message wants to come through me? And it's like you said, everyone goes, wow, I I thought I was signing up for one reason, or I thought I was kind of getting into it for this. And it ended up being this beautiful internal journey and me being able to appreciate more about myself, recognize, like you said, aspects of me that maybe I haven't really honored or noticed or given any love to for a while. And what came to me when you were talking, it just hit me. And I've never had this thought until right now is I think the real reason I started the publishing house or why I was guided to was to take me on that journey because the writing is what took me on this very healing journey. I actually just finished my book about Nina last Friday. And when I finished, I was like, holy shit, there it is. Like it all made sense all of a sudden, right? And yes, it's been fun to help about a thousand entrepreneurs become international bestselling authors. But I think that was just like the whipped cream on top. I think this was actually for me. Yeah. And Adriana, I think at the end of the day, us being in business, I'll always talk about where we're sharing our gifts. It's a platform to share our gifts. But in the sharing of our gifts, it is actually about us in that we move more into ourselves. And and we have those people, like we talked about before, who come in and reflect back to us and maybe also reflect things that, oh, yeah, there's still that side that, that I need to deepen within myself. So at the end of the day, it is actually about our own evolution. Mm. I love that word because that's what it is. And I think you've, you've had a front row seat for me, you know, and that's what I really, I could feel to my core on Friday. I was like this evolution, because the way I wrote the book, I wrote it basically in this chronological flow. And so when I looked back at who I was four or five years ago, wow. I mean, I don't even know what to say. It's, it's as different as can be. Mm, yes, yes. And I mean, of course, in the few years I've known you, I've seen so much shifting and changing. And um, I still remember, I think one of, I think it was probably one of our first sessions together. And and you were heading back to the States at the time. And I remember seeing you as like this real earth mama. I still remember that so clearly. And I think that was sort of so far from your mind at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And yet, that you've embraced that part of yourself now. And and so I'm also interested to know, as we talk about pivotal moments, when you chose to make the move back to your, to your, your birthplace and to move into your grandmother's homestead in Colorado, was that a turning point for you? Because as you know, in my last, the last chapter I wrote for your book, I was talking about the land calling you and the impact that the land has and the gifts it has for you. And so what did you experience around that? 
Mm, this is a good question. So it was, it was like a parallel experience. So everything in my head was like, oh no, the whole purpose of the last 25 years was so that you'd never go back to where you're from. And then my heart and my body, my soul was like, oh yes, it is time to go home. It is time to connect with, you know, my, both sides of my family have been here for five generations. So it really is like, this is our land, you know? So I was in this bit of internal tension and wrestling match. Um, but what ended up happening once we got here, I actually had a sense of me sinking into the soil where I actually became one with the actual earth. And then I realized, no, it wasn't about me figuring out a way to never come back. Me leaving was a way for me to figure out who I was outside of everything else, outside of all expectation, outside of any influence. And because I had dedicated myself to that journey, I could actually come back and it wasn't going to knock me off. So now it's really this sense of, oh, getting to return home and getting to return back as my truest self and not questioning it, not, not going back and forth. It's a huge gift. And it's actually, like you said, when I began to realize, oh my gosh, I am an earth mama. I, I think too, it's this, this difference between how people perceive you and how you really are. I don't think how people perceive me has been in the past a match at all to who I really am. You know, I actually would love to be in the kitchen all day cooking and making fun things for the boys. And that doesn't really make sense when you see someone who's like leading the way and successful in business, but that's who I really am. Mm. But now you have bridged those two aspects, haven't you? Yes, I have. And I think, you know, part of that is same thing. I talked about how I had to leave to, to be free of the definitions and expectations. And I had to free myself from the definitions and expectations of business. You know, we've talked about this before. I don't actually feel like I'm running a business because I have freed myself from those definitions and roles and all of the stuff that goes with it. I am doing, no, I am being who I really am. I'm letting the messages flow through me. And if you want to come and hang out and participate and partake of that, and you want to leave a gift at my door, wonderful. If you don't, awesome. Oh, a woman after my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> I've done, actually, as you were talking, I was thinking about when we met in Sydney, which was just over two years ago now. And even then that the path that we were individually on in our businesses and where we were at compared to like the difference that the energy of the last two years, our own internal journey has made to how we do show up in our business, which as you said, really is in our life, isn't it? Yes. Um, yeah, it, it's quite, it's, it is always great to reflect. And that's the beauty again of the writing. Mm. As you say, it, it gives you a chance to reflect and reflect in a deeper way than you otherwise would if you looked back on a situation. It's true. You know, the word that I, I would use if I even thought about the two years ago, me, um, I was still trying. I, I was trying to do good. I was trying to be successful. I was trying to make you happy. I was trying, I was trying all the time trying and I don't try anymore. I just be, I show up. If I'm inspired, I do the thing I'm inspired on. I do it with all my heart, but I'm not trying. Beautiful. Oh, that's a great insight. Yes. And so with your being now, I know in, in January where you sort of had another shift again, didn't you? <laughs> you, you realize what your prior, what you wanted your priority to be now. So share that. Where are you at now? <laughs> That's a good question. What I realized is if I'm honest, my greatest accomplishments are never going to be what I do in business. It's, it's not my most proud moments. My greatest accomplishment is going to be um, who I am in my home, who I am for my children, how I support them and, and love them and, and what we create here. And, you know, I, I did a post and a, an email and I just basically said, like, this takes priority. And if you're not the kind of person that I would actually want to have dinner with, or you wouldn't, 
you wouldn't be happy like looking after my kids or lending me eggs. Like, let's just not do this anymore. I, I'm not going to do it, you know? And it's so interesting because I, I told you, I don't feel like I'm leading and holding the vision anymore. It's carrying me. And it's just a completely different experience. So those women who are a part of your tribe now, those who are, who feel really aligned with, with your vibration, really, I, I was going to say with your message, but it's really with your, the frequency of your vibration now. Um, so how, how are they coming together? How's it looking for you now? What are you offering them? <laughs> um, <laughs> Half the time, I don't think they know what I'm offering or they don't care what the offer is, you know. This is what's been interesting is we've had a lot of things come to us. And this has sort of been a theme I keep hearing is like, let life come to you. So a lot of people are approaching us saying, hey, you know what? We've been watching you. We've been seeing this. Would you like to do this together? So I would say like at this point, 75% of our business, I didn't create the offer. I was approached with an invitation and I got to say yes or no. And this actually happened just last Friday, like two very big names approached me and said, we, we would love to come together and do this project. And it's like, oh, fun, sweet. You know, I'm not actually so cons like, <laughs> You know me in the past, I would like have offers and this is where I'm going to do them. This is how many people and I'm not doing that anymore. It's just like, let's see what happens. Either I receive inspiration or somebody else does, but it's not, uh, it's not planned out like it used to be. Oh, Adriana, just love it. Inspired action. Yes. And, and it's also, um, goes into, you know, I've been talking a lot this year about receiving and being open to receiving and it. It really feels like I, th I think you have always been a, a very um, able receiver, shall we say, but it feels like it's opened. It feels like there, there are many more channels now that you have opened to and acknowledge that there are many ways of receiving. Absolutely. And this is one thing that I'd invite people to do is realize like, even when I felt like um, I'm guided or I'm inspired to offer this, but I, I wasn't, I still had these blinders on and it wasn't like I was as open, like you said. In other words, if I need to create every offer, I'm still of the mindset that it's all up to me. And when you begin to realize actually it's not, then, well, there's a million possibilities and I don't have to come up with all of them. And that's very freeing and exciting. Oh, yes. Oh, just tingles all over me as you said that. And this is what I was about to say, this is what we're learning. We're not learning how to do it. We're remembering how to do it because we know how to do it, but it's clearing all those stories, isn't it? Dropping them away. And that takes strength. Yeah, it, it's true. It's, it's a very interesting thing because I actually, I, I remember a period of my business where I would wake up in the morning and I would be I, you know, once again, I brace myself and prepare myself for what I might find in my inbox. What, what's coming in today? And I think at some point I just realized, you know what? I, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't, I don't want to do this, but that was because I still thought everybody else's actions could deeply impact me. And actually they, they don't have to, they, they never really had the power except for what I gave it. This is about the universe supports what I do. The universe, because if I'm just trying to go after individuals, God knows what backbending yoga moves I'm going to do to try to constantly keep them happy with me. And that was a huge shift turning point. And so just on another note, do you have any upcoming books? Mm. Please share. <laughs> so this is this is one of those things when I was telling you opportunities are coming in. So yeah, we have our um, USA Today book, The Younger Self Letter is coming up and that's, we're currently selling spots for that. So that's coming together and then getting ready to do a project with Brian and Rhonda Swan. So there's a lot of collaboration where we didn't think of the idea. We didn't think of the concept, but we're coming alongside and offering the support that we love to, and they're doing what they love. So there's actually more books than ever happening all at once, but not in the same way they used to. Oh, and I, sh I should mention, I do have one more. 
I, I, I do have, I do have one of my own. It's called Sacred Redesign. So um, that's getting ready to come out in April. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a different mix. So if anyone wants to find out anything about any of these projects or anything else, where can they find you? They can go to my website, which is my full name, AdrianaMoniqueAlvarez.com. Well, thanks, Adriana. I'll pop that in the in the show notes. But also, just as a final thing, do you have a takeaway message for our listeners? Is literally shedding all of you that's not you. That's the scary part. You have to trust it. Oh, thank you so much. Such a pleasure to be in your energy, hear your story, hear your wisdom. So thank you, Adriana, for being a guest on the podcast. Thank you, Jacqueline, for this opportunity for helping me go through this journey of of returning to myself. I mean, you have been so instrumental in my growth and I can't thank you enough. Thanks for listening to Biz Alchemy. I'm Jacqueline Atkins. If you'd love to know more about the energy of business, subscribe to my newsletter at JacquelineAtkins.com forward slash newsletter and join me on Insight Timer where I have a large meditation library and do regular live classes. Until next time, enjoy creating alchemy in your biz.